Today we're gonna cover new Blender tutorials from different creators. We'll see different stuff from animation, effects and simulation, in addition to shading, and of course, geometry nodes. Josh Gambra on YouTube will discuss how to improve your renders by telling a story through your art. In this 20 minute tutorial, you will see how he sets up this desert planet scene in Blender and Photoshop. You will also learn how to plan your shot, position the camera using the camera angle, and add few models to the scene to convey a story. Kevin from Kev Bing's YouTube channel is back at it again with another tutorial, and this time you will be creating a cityscape from Ready Player One movie, using geometry nodes of course. First, you will construct one stand platform so we can stack them on top of each other using a bit of geometry nodes magic. After that, you will scatter all the platforms across the grid and give them some randomness. Next, you will add few details to the scaffolding structures such as trailers, stairs, air conditioners, and so on. Martin from CG Boost YouTube channel also released a great video on how to create a dynamic fence using geometry nodes in Blender, which means the fence will react to the topology on the ground and will also affect the height of the grass next to it so grass that is close to the fence will be smaller. First, you will shrink wrap a curve on top of the terrain and scatter your fence pieces using an instance on a point node. And with some adjustment, you will get a fence that reacts to the changes of the terrain automatically. And for the advanced part of the tutorial, you will see how you can make the grass react to its proximity from the fence. So as the grass gets closer to the fence, it gets smaller. And by converting the fence into a mesh and using proximity node, you will be able to control the size of the grass depending on the distance. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create this awesome looking logo revealing animation using cloth simulation, particles, and UV proximity modifiers. This effect can also be used to make a disintegration or crumbling effect. You will start first by creating a particle system which will be a guide to your pieces and by using an image texture you can influence the density of the particle. Next, you apply an explode modifier that will use the particle system as a guide to break in the mesh to pieces. After that step, you will see how you can apply the cloth simulation, create a vertex mask to influence only the logo area, and at the end, you will see some camera animations, shading, lighting, and you will finish your work by doing some compositing inside Blender. In this video, Rifle VFX will guide you through the process of using the amazing Blender add-on RBD Lab to make this collapse animation from start to finish. RBD Lab is an add-on that takes advantage of physics inside Blender to make the workflow of breaking stuff extremely easy and it can be used to add debris, dust, in addition to smoke. With its latest version, it is offering a lot of new features and you can see that in the video we made recently. In this tutorial, you will see exactly how you can use RBD Lab and some of its features to fracture the tower, add physics and constraints to the chunks, and use acetone to gradually break them. And finally, add debris, dust, and smoke in order to add more realism. This 40-minute tutorial is extremely helpful if you have RBD Lab already installed, but if you don't, I highly recommend that you check it out. In this quick tutorial, Simon3D will teach you how to recreate this iconic flying Nimbus for Dragon Ball Z inside Blender. First, you will have to increase the subdivision of the cube to have some geometry to use once you apply a displacement modifier controlled by a Voronoi texture. Now, by changing the coordinates field on the displacement modifier from the local to object, you can animate the displacement just by manipulating the attached empty object. You will also see how you can create a tune shader from the cloud and even how to add a trail for it. Steve from the Massive Tree YouTube channel also released a tutorial on how to use geometry nodes to set up a radial array in Blender. First, he demonstrates the problems you might face when using a circle and why you want to use an arc node instead. You will learn how to add other settings to your instant object such as rotation, scale, location, how to offset the rotation, and also how to expose all the relevant settings so that you will be able to adjust the radial effect from the modifier window. This is another awesome tutorial from Default Cube YouTube channel, and it is all about how to divide something into parts that do not intersect. Through the magic of geometry nodes, you will randomize the grid deliberately through a combination of triangles and dual mesh nodes. You will also learn how to add shading and procedural textures through your stone's formations. 
By the end, you will have a geometry node setup that will allow you to turn anything into stone formation. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create this abstract seamless procedurally generated animation using only geometry nodes in Blender. At first, you would think that the node setup is complicated, but surprisingly it is not. The node tree is extremely simple, but the bulk of the effect is done by manipulating a bunch of cube instances around the circle and animating them and adding some randomness using the index node. The results look really intricate and satisfying at the same time. This tutorial is from Arendelle and it is all about creating the side-scrolling infinite loopy landscape animation with an airplane flying through it. The landscape created is powered by geometry nodes, which makes it fully procedural. As a result, you will have more freedom to adjust the objects surrounding the design. You will also learn how to loop noise and make it scroll from the left to the right. Next, you will see how you can animate the spaceship by following the topology of the ground achieved by calculating the distance between the airplane and the ground, allowing you to steer the plane left and right. This is a really useful 10 minute tutorial on how to fix some of the most common issues when it comes to shading in Blender. This video is a true savior. Sometimes when modeling in Blender, you encounter a few inevitable nasty shading artifacts that could ruin your project. The good news is, this technical problem is fixable thanks to this step-by-step -step video. In this simple tutorial, you will find out who's the culprit behind some of those shading issues and how to fix them using various techniques such as flatten, normal transfer, and weighted normals. How to animate a collection of objects along a path in Blender? Well, this sounds simple, but in practice, you will find that it is a lot more complicated than that. Max Edge on YouTube uploaded a tutorial on how to use geometry nodes to create an infinite object flow on curves. You will learn how to control the speed, the size of your instant objects, and how to rotate them randomly, in addition to how to change their size based on the radius and the tilt of the curve. The next one is not a tutorial, but three separate ones. However, they are not so different from one another, as they all showcase step-by-step -step instructions on how to manipulate fracture geometry using geometry nodes and Blender Cell Fracture add-on. The first one is from Sina Sinai, and it focuses on creating reverse fracture effect, which is great to use if you are building a platform or game, or just want to add some visual appeal to your digital environment. The second one is from Max Edge. And similar to the first, it is all about proximity node and how to affect the chunks of the fractured object based on a set distance. And the last one is from Relight Motion, which allows a similar approach to the previous tutorial, but with a slightly different result. If you are interested in one of these tutorials, you will find the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.